generations that come before us, they went to church on a regular basis. They knew their Bibles. They knew the Holy Spirit. And that's all but lost now. I want to sit down together, show you some things that's going on in the news and how it applies to Scripture. So, dust your Bibles off. Come on. Okay, you're listening to Watchman's Update. I got a, I got one here for you. I was gonna change. I got, I've got two or three in my head of what I want to do. I got some stuff wrote down, but I'm kind of putting everything on pause here, and I want to talk about. I'm just gonna go through this quick, not too quick, hopefully, but. I, I kind of jumped in it a little bit on the other episode, but Passover. This week is Passover week, and it's also Holy Week, and they coincide for the most part. You got Palm Sunday that starts Holy Week, and I ain't got it in front of me, but I can't keep. I'm just not good at keeping up with stuff. Holidays and stuff is the hardest thing for me to to keep track of, but. You got Palm Sunday, and then Good Friday, and then the following Sunday is going to be the uh, you know, Resurrection Sunday. Now, people always go, well, Resurrection Sunday and Easter is the same thing. No, it's not. Easter is something else, and a lot of, well, not a lot of times, but sometimes you'll get your calendar, and Resurrection Sunday and Easter don't line up. And they whole deal behind that because the Jewish calendar and our calendar and all that. But see, with the Jewish calendar, what's going on there? And I think it's the Wednesday of this year. And Wednesday, I just marked it on the calendar and said, "Okay, here it is." And, and we done. You know, it's the first day of Passover, which is Passover, Passage. You're supposed to do no work on that day, and and. Uh, you know, it's up to prepare food or what have you. And it's supposed to be a day of rest and and remembrance of Passover. So, you know, I, I'm i not Jewish. I don't do the, uh, you know, you, none of us should be sacrificing anything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The, the, the Jesus is, is the atoning sacrifice to pay all the debts. So, you know, all the debts. So there's no, there's no more sacrifices, but. It does say, I, I want. I just want to talk about this a little bit because Jesus would have celebrated Passover. And there's a reason it's in the Bible. And I was, I was talking to my wife about it and she said, I don't know. And I, I've got a lot of my family that, that fuss at me and say, you shouldn't be celebrating those old Jewish holidays. But then you don't ever hear none of them say, you don't, don't celebrate uh Christmas or don't celebrate Halloween. You see what I'm saying? So it's back and forth. Well, me and my wife, we decided, that, you know, we'd just try to celebrate it the best we know how. And uh, we went to Dairy Queen, got a pretty ice cream cake because you can't, you know, sun leaven bread, so you can't, can't eat any bread. So we got an ice cream cake and I had to, and it's, it's things like this. And uh, had the little girl in there. I said, right, pass over real big on that cake for me. And uh, she she said, what's Passover? And I went, what? You don't know what Passover is? And the, I guess she was the boss lady. She just shook her head and said, this, these kids nowadays, and, <laughs> you know. And she said, is that? And then I heard her holler from the back. She said, is that one word or two? I said, I don't think it matters at this point. You know, as long as we get something on the cake, we, we all know what it is. We're going to eat it anyway, you know. But uh, but long story short, we got the cake. But that, my point is, in saying that, they never... A lot of these kids never even heard of these things. And it plainly says in your Bible, because we went to the dollar store and the lady at the dollar store brought it up. Well, somehow we was getting something or doing something and it come up. And I said, yeah, today's Passover. And I say the dollar store, Dollar General. But uh, she said, yeah, it says it's a, you should celebrate that. It's that way when your children ask, what are we doing this for? You can tell them. 
It's what the Bible says. And I said, oh. And it occurred to me, I remembered reading somewhere that they're the 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 Jewish read scripture, read the read the Holy Scriptures every, for their holidays and like Puro may read. And and so I said, Well, after we get done eating this evening, we'll uh, I'll sit down and and I'll I said, I'll just read it. I'll read it out loud. And we read the story out of Exodus of Passover, you know, and if you know the story, everybody should know the story, I would hope, but but uh, Passover is when the death angel passed over the homes in in Egypt. And I got some notes here I'll just call out. You know, one thing I didn't realize is uh, Pharaoh is a symbol, a picture of Satan. You know, God hardened his heart and used Pharaoh to show his power to his people. And he even says in there, I could. He, he told Moses, he'd tell Pharaoh, I could wipe you off the face of the earth, you know, today. But I've chosen not to, to, to display in you my power. Something, something like, I'm paraphrasing there. Uh, something along them lines I read in there. But, uh, but you know, I, there's a lot to this. And I, and we say, I sit down, like I said, we read this, read this out loud. And then the next night, which was last night, me and my daughter, one of my daughters went and stayed the night with one of her friends. And, and me and my other daughter watched the Harriet Tubman movie, Harriet. And, you know, a lot, they sing Go Down Moses, and there's a lot of references to Passover in that movie. And I didn't realize it. I wasn't even thinking of along them lines when I said, let's watch it because we was picking a movie and I said, let's watch that one. Well, in other words, this applies to our life today. There's a lot of stuff in this story that we don't realize that applies to our life today. And that's what I want to share with you. I'm trying to go as fast as I can. And that, there's a very key for a lady in the dollar store to point that scripture out to me. And I, and I went to go look it up. And I said, you know, I'll read. And that's how I decided to read the whole whole story of Passover. But I done on two episodes back, I done a, I talked about applying how to apply the blood. I, I, I called it something crazy trying to get people to listen to it. Uh, Dad's blood authority or something like that. I said, somebody li- uh, click on that see what that is. But, but it's, there were 600,000 men, not counting the women and children, 600,000 men who came out of, out of Egypt, the Israelites. And if you go back, you know, that means 600,000 men, heads of households, 600,000 of them took the blood and put it on the doorpost. And not a one, there's no record in here that I know of. I've read it and read it. There's no record that I know of where it says that any of them didn't do it. That any of them failed to do it, didn't sacrifice the lamb, take the hyssop, dip it in the blood, and paint their doorpost. And that's very important. You see what I'm saying? That means that every, at some point, God knew that if he sent Moses, that these people were so oppressed and so in such a dark Desperate place, I guess is the right word, that every last one of them would listen to the Lord and listen to the, the man that the Lord sent. And the Lord, and he told Moses, he said, I'll make you like a God to Pharaoh. So he's, this is a symbol of what's going on. He made Moses like God. So in other words, he's a picture of Jesus. And Pharaoh is a picture of Satan. And then Aaron, it's, he's, it says he made Aaron his prophet. Now, if you'll notice, every time one of these things, the, the, the plagues, the plague of the blood, turning the water to blood, Aaron's staff is the one that he told Aaron to go out and hold his staff out over the water and make the water turn into blood. You see what I'm saying? It's always, and I didn't know that. I thought it was Moses. And I was reading it and saying, oh, wait a minute. That's Aaron's staff, Aaron's staff. And I heard uh, Kent Christmas do a story. Uh, I I didn't even finish it, and I wish I would have now. <laughs> I didn't even finish it. He talked about 
he, he could done a little uh, backstory about Aaron Staff. You know, Aaron Staff, if I ain't mistaken, is the one that budded. But, uh, but in other words, being his prophet, God needs somebody to work to. He needs you. You see what I mean? You see where I'm going with this? And you can't work unless you you've done what you're supposed to be doing. And you see what I'm saying? You you got I got how do you apply the blood? You can't you can't work through you if you won't apply the blood to your home. You see what I mean? How do you apply the blood? You put your sins under the blood. You repent, is what I got wrote here. Repent every morning, every evening, and I got a whole nother backstory for that. Why every morning and every evening? But if you read, you need to be putting your, your sins under the blood. Make sure you're right. Now, I put, I wrote over here, stay right. Stay right with the Lord. Every morning, every evening. And I got some good key stuff here. I'm, trying, I'm going fast because I got a lot of information to give you. Uh, praise God every morning and every evening. And pray for others. Now, I'm going to give you a key to tap into the Holy Spirit. People go, oh, I don't know you. You know some of these preachers, they get filled with the Holy Spirit, and people go, how do they do that? How do they do it? I'm going to tell you how to do it. <laughs> Pay attention. Pray for others. I watch. I'm going to tell you what I've done. I, I do this. I, for, I forgot that I've done this. but uh, And I pray for other people. You know, my, my wife's ministry has got a lot going on, and, and with homeless people and people in addiction and what have you. So I've always I'm not I'm not sure of people to pray for there, but I watch Ray Comfort videos, and if you don't know who Ray Comfort is, he's a an old guy that rides a bicycle out there in California and goes around with a, a, a camera and a microphone and, and interviews people and ask them, you know, and basically interviews them and talks to them about where they are with God and uh, tries to get them saved. And he presents the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, and tells it to them in a way that uh, breaks it down really simply where they can understand it. And then when he gets done, he says, hey, will you think about what we've talked about? And it's really repetitive, but some of those folks are so lost in such a dark place. And I'm telling you, when the video's over, if you'll just stop whatever you're doing, and pray for those people because the, that means you see the gospel has already been presented to them they already know what they need to do all they need is a move of the holy spirit to snatch hold of them and drag them out of the fire you see that and you pray for them people and and there's something about praying for somebody that a hundreds or thousands of other people are praying for that person the Holy Spirit, it's like you, you know, it says you pray in the will of God, and that's in the will of God. And when you get in the will of God with a thousand other people, whoo, there's a flood. <laughs> I feel the Holy Spirit getting on me right now just talking about it. There's a flood, you know what I mean? And you, oh, yeah, you want to know how to get a hold of the Holy Spirit. And that's the same way with the, my wife's ministry when she's, and they, oh, we need to be praying for so and so. She's drinking again, or I need we need to pray for so and so. She doesn't run off with that sorry, no good man again. You know what I mean? Or we need to be praying for so and so. She got kicked out of where you know so. When when and when you pray for somebody that other people are praying for, all of you pray together. They are some serious. What's it say? Where two or three are gathered in my name, and the there in the midst I'll be. Well, if you get two or three thousand gathered in, you see what I mean? You see where I'm going? It becomes, it goes from a little bit of water on your toes to ooh, feeling good. You, you, you up to your neck in the Holy Spirit. You see what I mean? So, yeah, that's how you get the Holy Spirit. But that's, you need to be doing that every morning and every evening. You need to spend time, praise God, spend time with the Lord and read the words of the Lord. You can't know God if you won't talk to him. You can't know God if you won't let God talk back to you through his word, through his scriptures. You see what I'm saying? All right, I went a little long on that. I'll keep moving. Uh, the story here, if you know the story, they 
they all put the blood on their home. The firstborn died. All the firstborn in Egypt were killed. And there's wailing in the middle of the night. And even in the middle of the night, it says at midnight, in the middle of the night, they summoned Moses. The Pharaoh summoned Moses. I don't know if he summoned Moses and Aaron, but anyway, they summoned him, told him to come up there. Said, you get out of here. Drove them out. And not only drove them out, but the, all the, the Hebrews, Israelites, plundered the land by asking the Egyptians for silver and gold or anything that they could take with them. And they plundered the land. And what happened was when the day come around, that, that day when it was coming around, they said, wait a minute, what have we done? All our wealth is gone. You know, if you know, the plagues were blood. Frogs and frogs uh, that come out of the Nile and just covered the whole land with frogs, gnats and flies. And what seemed gnats didn't seem to bother me, just put up with the gnats. That's what got me. All the rest of them, he's like, Oh, do something, pray for me, pray for me. But the gnats, he just put up with that. And I thought that was funny. Flies, livestock. The livestock had come down with a plague, killed all the livestock of the Egyptians. Bulls, I, th I thought that was saying something there with that bulls because uh, he stood in front of him. I, think, I can't remember if it was Moses or Aaron that stood in front of him with soot from the fireplace and he throwed it up in the air and it become a dust and all of them immediately broke out with bulls all over their body. Uh, hail, the hail you know, beat their livestock and, it, and it's important to note they had a warning every time. Every time, as I was reading this, my one of my daughters said, they're being bad. <laughs> you know? She said, they're being bad. I said, who? She said, Moses and Aaron. I said, how are they being bad? Well, they could do all that bad stuff. I said, they ain't doing it. They're God's doing it. And she just looked at me. I said, you going to tell me God's being bad? You know, you know. I said, look at He's telling him to let them people don't go at any moment. This is a word for somebody. At any moment, the suffering could stop. You could soften your heart, turn, repent, and seek the face of God and stop the pain and stop this. You see what I mean? Any moment, Moses could have done it. But it says in there that, that God hardened Pharaoh's heart so he could show his mighty power. So in, in Pharaoh's case, like he's a, like I said, he's a picture of Satan. But uh, at any time we, you know, any time, you know, he told him over and over and over, you know, if you don't let us go, there's going to be something else that happens. And I think if I'm not mistaken, the way I read it, you know, I've read this story a bunch and, and, you know, I get these stories mixed up. I'm pretty sure each one of these is a week, a week that went by the following week. You see what I mean? Another plague on the first day of the week, if I, if I ain't mistaken. But you get to the bulls and the hail. The hail beat the, the livestock down. And he, he told them, he said, you know, bring in your livestock. And a lot of the, it does say that a lot of the Egyptians brought in their livestock. But some didn't. And that, I thought about that, and I said, that's the way some people are today. You tell them about God, and you tell them about what they need to be doing, they'll get mad and puff up and just fight tooth and nail to do the opposite. We see a lot of people in Hollywood doing that, don't we? Just fight tooth and nail to do the exact opposite. Just out of, it's a spirit of rebellion. And, he, you know, he said, after you think after the blood, the frogs, the gnats, the flies, and the livestock, and the bulls, that after all that happened, that when he said, hey, you better bring in your livestock, it's coming a hailstorm like Egypt's never seen before and never going to see since. You better get all your livestock and all your people and all your, all your workers and everybody and get them in out of the field cause, or they'll die. And you'd think that would have been, okay, yeah, I'll do that. But a lot of them still said, no, nah. left them out there. And they, and you imagine if you had family members who got plumbled to death by hail, you see what I mean? Now what shape you in? Now, now you see why they, at the end of the story, they chase after them. And now you see why they're sitting there going, they sorry, no goods. They're evil. And Pharaoh even called Moses evil. Said, your heart is set on evil. 
You see what I mean? See, that's how the world looks at Christians. Your heart, they're, oh, they're evil. No, you're, you're the ones being evil. You see what I mean? This is a great picture. It also says in there that if you notice when they went to Egypt, start with when uh, uh, Joseph and his coat of many colors, you know, and when he went there to start with, when he got his family, they said, hey, tell them you're shepherds because e uh, Egyptians find shepherds detestable. That's another picture there. The, the, the Egypt, you know, the devil and the, and, the, and the Egypt being a picture of the world and how they find shepherds, preachers, you know, as detestable. Anyway, I got I get lost. There's a lot in like I said, a, I tell you all the time, there's a there's a literal meaning and then a spiritual meaning and a prophetic meaning of everything written in there in here. And sometimes you'll see one, sometimes you'll see the other, and that's what that's what people talk about when they're reading the Bible. Oh, something just jumped out at me there. That's the Holy Spirit revealed something to you that that you didn't see the last time you read it. After hell, it was a locust. It said, if you don't let the people go now, whatever plants are still left after the hail, it beat the rest of the plants into the ground that had bloomed. They wasn't no good or had budded. It said, if you don't, if you don't let them go now, locust. Well, locust came and I mean devoured everything, even the fruit trees, everything. They wasn't a green thing in the whole land, it said. Then that wasn't enough had darkness, and I thought about this darkness. I said, ooh, I said, darkness come and set on, see, they lived out in Goshen. The Hebrews, Israelites lived out in Goshen. So they were separated, and that's another key point. If we as Christians separate ourselves out over here, then God can defend us against our enemies. We can't be over there intermingling, you, you know, the, you don't want to plant your good crops in with your weeds. A harvester can't come. You see what I mean? Yeah, there's a whole another story. Separate the wheat from the tares. Anyway, darkness and then the, then the firstborn. And I thought about, I was watching that Harriet Tubman movie. There's one more thing I wanted to show you here. It, it lessons in that we're all slaves we've all been slaves to the sin at some point in our life that's what that whole the picture is we're living in the world and we're slaves to this old world and the darkness in it and, and and we have to have the courage you imagine the courage it took for the slaves in eight you know eight was about 1860 1859 i think's when that fugitive slave act no it was 1850 when that fugitive slave act come into effect harriet tubman deal She'd already run before then. You're talking about 1840-something when Harriet Tubman ran. Imagine the courage to be there on a, you know, living in all that. There's a lot. They showed a little bit of it, of the mental, the way that the slave masters or plantation masters, whatever you want to call them, how they figured out how to manipulate, mentally manipulate their slaves to get them to stay and keep them living in fear. And I thought that was, I said, that's another picture that, that they didn't, that people don't realize going on with Pharaoh and all this. It was mental manipulation. They had magis and, you know, the, their uh, magicians that, that would do all kinds of, you know, saw all these miracles. There's, not all of them, but there's a good amount of these miracles that the magis, that, that Pharaoh's Egyptian magis could perform. There was power there. They had their dark powers. And they had ways of manipulating and controlling the Hebrews. It went, you know, psychologically and through terror and fear. And we're seeing a lot of that. that all, and the point of this, the prophetic point that's coming with this, is this is a picture of the entire deal there. It even says that, let me read this right here. Uh, the parting of the Red Sea. You remember they went down and parted Red Sea? The Red Sea is a, a picture. Remember, water is a picture of the Holy Spirit. And red, it's red water, Red Sea. It's the Holy Spirit mixed with the blood of Jesus. You see what I'm saying? The Red Sea parted, and God helped 
his people across the sea. And he done it right in front of it. Uh, where's it at right here? And they encamped by the sea directly opposite of Baal Zephon. That's Baal of the north. You know, if you know who Baal is, that's a big demon. I don't know if Baal's actually the devil or just a, a chief demon there. But right in front of the, the Baal was what was holding the Canaanites slave. And they were all worshiping that and doing all that sacrifices child sacrifices and all that mess so god brought the israelites across the sea and brought them out right there at Baal of the north a temple there would have been a temple or an archway or something there if nothing more than a statue something of Baal right there he brought them out to show them you see Baal right there but look at me look what i just did i just brought you out of the land of slavery out of the out of egypt through the red sea and then watch this, turns around, jams the chariots, the, the wheels of the chariots of the Egyptians and brings the water back down on and kills all of them. And it says, uh, it even says there, he jammed the wheels of the chariots so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Israel. I mean, against Egypt. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. And and uh, at daybreak, I like this, at daybreak, when the light hit, the water, the sea went back to its place and killed all of them. That is a picture. I read that and I said, that's a picture of the seventh day, the, the millennial reign of the Lord. At daybreak, and when the Lord shows up, there's going to be there's going to be a mighty power of the Lord that's going to wipe out all of the devil and his armies. And it even says, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. But the one thing, the other thing I wanted to show here, he took 600, this is Pharaoh, he took 600 of his best chariots along with his with all the other chariots of Egypt, with officers over all of them. Now, officers, it's very important. This is a picture of the angels, the officers, the angels over all of them. And, you know, if you're talking about Satan. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so he pursued the Israelites. And I see the Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, horsemen and troops pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they encamped by Piharoth, opposite of Baal Zephon. Now, you see that. There's a chain of command there. That's what Paul's talking about in Ephesians chapter 6. Or is it it's 5 or 6? Yes, 6. Where he's talking about the there's a structured order of the, of the Satan's kingdom. And we have to, let me take you all the way back to this, the blood. We have to put on the full armor of God. We have to put on the blood. We put the blood on our on ourselves, put the blood on our homes, put the blood on our families, and get washed in the blood, stay washed in the blood, so we have the full, and put on the full armor of God so we can take a stand against this, these devil schemes. That's where I was taking you with all this. That's how come Harriet Tubman was able to get up and leave a plantation barefooted and listen and hear the voice of the Lord and go north a hundred miles on foot. You see what I'm saying? The Bible talks all about how the Holy Spirit can fill you and give you all kind of mighty power. That's what I wanted to give you. That's what I'm taking you with. We need to be celebrating this Passover if you don't do nothing else but read the story and talk about it with your children make them get off that devil phone off that devil internet and sit down and listen to the word of the lord even fight with them for an hour if you have to to get them out there and then when you get them out there now you got them and you and watch what happens that's what I got for you. God bless y'all. I took It took me a long ways to get there. God bless y'all. Stick around for the prayer at the end. I ain't playing any advertisements. That's all I got. You're listening to Watchman's Update. Thank you for listening. All right. 
right, I got a new prayer. So y'all lean in. Here we go. I got to do it quick. Dear Lord, I pray for all those who hear this podcast. I pray, Lord, for your healing Holy Spirit to minister to them. Please, Lord, be their, be their comforter and healer. Please, Lord, put a hedge of protection around them. Please, Lord, give them the courage and the strength to trust in you and to do your will. Please, Lord, be their vanguard and their rear guard. Go before them and be the defender behind them. Be the rock they stand on. Please, Lord, give them a renewed heart to chase after you, Lord. Remove the calluses from their heart. Please, Lord, have mercy on them and give them time to turn and repent. Please, Lord, be patient with them. Please, Lord, forgive their sins, Lord, and give them a new start. Thank you, Lord. In Christ Jesus' name, Yeshua Messiah's name, thank you, Lord. Amen.